We're here at the Haus der Kunst uh, amongst the incredible work of the Algerian German artist Hamid Zanati. And it's this really amazing oasis of commitment and tenacity and beauty uh, that involves a lot of juxtaposition of patterns that you know involve where he's from, which is Algeria, and where he lived, which was Munich in his later years. The show All Over is curated by Anna Schneider and it is a sort of revelation of a show. And it really brings to life the work of an, an artist that I feel has something important to say about what it means to work in a way that is very isolated and without much uh, recognition but also very determined. And the determination comes from a belief in color, pattern, shape, and form. The relevance to, to the conversation of contemporary art now um, is that there are a lot of Re there's a lot of re-examination of what it means to work in a certain medium. So for example, a lot of women artists were thought of as craft makers because they worked with, with uh, textiles or yarns, etc. From Sheila Hicks to Annie Albers, for an artist like Hamid Zanati, there was also the double entendre, of, uh, double difficulty of being from Algeria, not having the same exposure even when he came to Munich, being seen as a craft maker, and also experiencing the kind of prejudice, undoubtedly, that you know, a lot of these artists experienced here in Germany at the time, but also back in Algeria, where he was seen as a bit of a, a radical, you know? And I think that in the conversation that is going on at the moment, it has been going on for a few years, it's important to acknowledge that all work that takes into account a kind of visible um, re record of one's life, things that have happened in a certain era, and combines that with beauty and technique is art. And I think this show is a real example of that. I think the elements of um, ceramic work in his oeuvre, in his body of work, is also a very important aspect culturally because, you know, in Islamic culture, ornaments and adorned ornaments are both utilitarian but also works of art. Um, and this tradition was really held back for many years. It was a way of dividing. The other aspect of his work, which is very interesting, is that he works on surfaces that are already preformed in a way, which I think is a very clear and precise um, idea that he had. It, it was also about using what was around him and creating beauty out of the simplest things. So his ceramics are more a direct uh, extension of his paintings, but in a way they stand as sculptures. You know, the same way you look at Sonia Delaunay or Madeleine Odundo or, you know, some of the greatest artists, you look at these as them as pieces of work that say something and converse with the other pieces of work. They are not um, domestic objects, but they are domestic in the sense that you can live with them. I love the feel of even a, uh, uh, an artificial sort of shaped object. If it's adorned, it becomes something else. It's giving it a presence and I think for the, for the works that he made on ceramics that when, where the ceramics were not originally by him, they were just plain, and he painted them or adorned them, they become even more present in our lives and they become even more relevant in relation to his conversation about modernism, Islamic folkloric art and, and culture, you know, just about Algeria, about Munich, about 70s, particularly about 70s German um, neo-expressionist uh, ideas, he becomes part of that conversation. They're also very musical. I find the ceramics particularly musical. 
the exceptional, and they're almost expressed as abstract, graphic, non-obvious musical notes. One of the great things about the exhibition is I think it's, there's a little um, CD player because he loves, he used to burn his CDs apparently and he would paint over them. But you're looking at this work and there's Um Kulthum comes on, some uh, German pop band from the 80s. Then you have Quincy Jones, stuff like that. And you know, it's really, it's not fake. That's the point. It's very genuine openness. And I understand that openness, which you can have without losing knowledge of who you are and what you also want to show. That's almost instinctive, that comes out. But he had an open mind and he, he used that to really, I think, place himself amongst the peers that he was never shown with. It's a wonderful um, experience because it's not often you come across a work by an artist you never knew that is immediately relevant both to your life and or you as a viewer but also to the conversation of contemporary art. The art world and the institutional art world in particular has a history of recognizing great or important artists. And when I say important, it's not about fame or value, just what their, how their work fits in the whole, in the whole scenario. They, they, you know, the art world and the institutional world have a, a sort of history of, you know, coming into it a bit late sometimes, you know. If you think that Alice Neal, who has some great, great exhibitions that have toured recently, you know, was overlooked for many years, or, you know, Alma Thomas, or even Romare Bearden and people like that. It's very interesting that, you know, this still happens. But I think actually it's the role of the curator, because I think most of the institutions are restricted by the number of shows they can have, budgets, etc. The curator is really the one to convince. With the curator, you know, the, the possibilities of introducing constantly new aspects, new um, ideas, new perspectives, whether they're um, queer perspectives, uh, international perspective, perspectives from the Islamic world, the, from West Africa, from Asia, wherever. The opportunity of introducing all these perspectives, but still making sure that they are of a level <laughs> that can sit comfortably amongst each other is really the task. And I think that, you know, it says a lot about the curator of the show that she was committed to not only the artist as an artist, but also she was committed to exposing the work of this artist to the public. And that's what a museum's duty is. You know, the museum is the only place that you can walk off the street uh, as a member of the public and see the work of someone that you have really very little opportunity to see in another forum. And it is the duty of the museum and obviously of the curator to make sure that that is constantly facilitated. So I think curators need to be encouraged, not just to travel to biennials and, you know, fairs, etc. No, actually, because art like this and other art by other artists that we're still ready to recognize, whether they're alive or, or not, is not necessarily in those places. That happens a long time after, but the public deserves to see it as soon as it's discovered. This idea of an outsider artist being an outsider artist because they didn't go to art school, etc., is really dated. I think, <laughs> I think we can all agree that actually um, it has no relevance to the status and the quality of the work. Important work is important work. And I think Hamid Zanati's work is a reflection of the bias, you know, <laughs> that, that exists um, to sort of stop work that is forward thinking and almost intuitive in a way that is not understood by institutions to becoming seen as really important artwork. If anyone walks into this exhibition, actually you don't care 
about whether he's trained as an artist. He did train as an artist. He trained as an artist all his life. From the first time he drew something, his training started. And his intense training came in adulthood when he sort of made the choice to live and work like an artist, starting in Algeria and then in Munich. He could have given up, but that was his education. And you know, it's the best education ever. I think in Hamid Zanati's scenario, the beauty or the really interesting thing about this exhibition, you know, uh, all over is that there's no pain, there's no sadness in the show. There's no regret, there's no lament. It's really um, a show that is optimistic and very focused because the artist was focused. And what is unfortunate, of course, is that, you know, he's not here to experience not just being shown in an institution, but in a shown in an institution like this. And I think with Hamid Zanati, even though he did not achieve success in a certain way um, when he was alive, what this show reveals is that his real quest was to be free, you know, to be free of restraints, whether they were religious or social, even though he, was, he clearly respected a lot of traditional elements, and to be free of certain things that made it impossible for him to have access, and to be free in his head, you know, it's, it's a very rare thing to be free in your head.